Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed morning tea. We will resume the meeting at item number nine. Considerations of mo motions for supplementary reports and motions for the change of order in business. Thank you, Councillor McGinn. The amendment. Uh, thank you, Councillor Morris. The amendment is? We bring item 15.1 forward because there's a reasonable number of people in the gallery that would be interested in the outcome of that matter. Anyone have any objections to that? No. I'll second it. Thank you. That, we'll make that the motion. Thank you. All in favour? Aye. Thank you. So we carry forward the motion on page 35. Councillor Morris. That, that council does not undertake any further negotiations for a pilot training facility or circuit training activities at Kempsey Airport till such time as the noise management plan, fly enabling agreement and airport master plan has been implemented Second by that. council. <coughs> I, um, I, I just point out that the background is written with we's instead of I because it was put, actually put in by three councillors, even though it's recorded that I was the only one that put it in, because it's the reconsideration of a failed amendment from the last meeting. So there were two other councillors that actually submitted it in conjunction with me. That's why the background is written in the, the way it is instead of the first person. Thank you, councillor. Any debate? We have a mover, we have a seconder. Any debate? Anyone else wish to speak? I'm going to put the recommendation. All in favour of the recommendation? Aye. Thank you, councillor. It's been carried. We move back on to item number 10, the um, consideration of uh, reports relating to public forum matters. There was none. Consideration of reports relating to the consensus motion. There is 13.6, 13.7, 13.8, 13.9 and 20.2. Thank you, Councillor. And we also, any... Um, any any questions? You got a question, Councillor? Oh, Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, withdraw 20.2 uh, as I have an amendment, but I'd also like to ask some questions if that is possible, Madam Mayor. Yes, certainly. 13.7, um, it's a financial question, and I'll have to get to the document. Um, that's the financial one. Oh, I'm trying to find the page, Madam Mayor, sorry. Page 26 and 27, yep. Uh, that the information be noted. But in the um, attachments uh, to this, it's got a report that we have $42 million on fixed deposit. One of them is $1 million and $1, which is in intriguing how that ever got to be there. But um, the question I have is to do with cinema funding and it doesn't appear anywhere there, but would the $2 million that we have committed to the cinema come out of the, one of that, that $42 million that's sitting there? So that's my question. That's correct. Okay. Um, and the next question is to do with the cinema as well. When the money comes from the federal government, is there a lead time when it arrives in our account or does it get paid directly to the developer? Of course, are we going to be earning interest from federal government money is possibly my real question. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. The, uh, the, the payment schedule is all um, articulated in the funding deed um, and it's all based on uh, percentage of completion. So um, effectively on 35% of completion, um, we'll get $700,000 from the federal government and that will continue at sort of um, a similar uh, profile throughout um, the duration of the project. So the $2 million um, will effectively, sorry, 700000 at 35% of completion, another 700000 at 70%, and then the final 600000 uh, post completion of the project and post, completion, post supply of the, uh, pro the report. And that money would come into our account and then just go straight back out to Gowings? Yeah. No. Okay, so 
Uh, those are my questions on 13.7. I have other questions too, but uh, anyone else wants to ask a question? No. I've got a question on 13.7, Madam Mayor. We'll take 13.7 while we're on it, and then we'll go back to you, Thank Councillor you. Horple. Thank you, Councillor Morris. On Appendix 13.7.2, which is the accrued investment income versus budget, and I know it's very early in the year, but the accrued... We discussed this last night. Ah, well, I wasn't here. The accrued investment is considerably more, so I was just asking, could that be adjusted into the future to reflect more like what we expect to get rather than having <laughs> constant changes in the QBR? So in the first QBR, can that be adjusted to reflect more what is anticipated as opposed to what is there at the moment? Thank you, Director. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. All of those items will obviously be re reviewed as part of the QBR. Um, that just reflects at the moment um, the, the discrepancy to the budget number reflects um, some assumptions that were made in the budget in terms of the budget profiling, which is flat phased, um, and also the, um, the cash flows. Um, so we'd expect more cash to be going out as projects are delivered during the year. Um, and so that uh, investment income number would um, sort of decline. So over the, the course of the year, we're still expecting that to come out close to the full year budgeted number. Um, but it will be looked at as part of that um, QBR report presented in November. Yeah, just that last, in, in the year just gone, it wasn't. There was a big discrepancy. And I'm just of a mind that I don't want to see a similar discrepancy at the end of the year because they had dollars that could have been allocated, potentially allocated to something else. Yeah. Councillor Horvath. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in in 13.8, my question relates to the last page of the attachment on the KPIs, and it relates to the financial and asset performance indicator. So it's on the very last page of the KPIs attachment, and it's got infrastructure renew renewals, and all the other variances year to date are you know, within a, a percentage or so, but the infrastructure renewals is uh, minus 26.2%. Um, is there a reason for that? And could you explain to me what that infrastructure renewals means to us as a council? Yeah, so the infra infrastructure renewals ratio basically is um, that asset renewals, the amount of money we're spending on asset re renewals as a proportion of depreciation and amortisation. So it just reflects effectively the um, rate at which we're replacing those assets compared to the rate that they're depreciating. Um, I would look at some of these numbers with a bit of caution, um, given that it's only one month into the financial year. Um, and, you know, as we've discussed on a number of occasions, we're, we're going through a major exercise in terms of um, uh, remapping our general ledger and effectively trying to re-engineer the business financially. Um, and so um, one month's worth of data is very, very early. Um, and so um, we've reported it, um, and um, that, that, that's based on the July year-to-date results. Um, as the, the year progresses, obviously, we'll get um, a, you know, a greater view in terms of how some of these numbers are, are looking. But we've also got certain assumptions around budget profiling as well, um, it, given that it's flat phased over the, over the financial year. So basically, that means just equally budgeted in each of the 12 months. Um, and so there'll be some discrepancies that will be thrown out as a result of that as well. Um, so I, I think, you know, as we progress through the year, some of these ratios will start to uh, more align to where we would expect them to be. Um, one month's worth of data, it makes it a little bit difficult to, to analyse and to explain. Thank you very much, Director Mitchell. Councillor Morris. Just a small, just a small follow-up on that one um, to Director Mitchell. Um, is with the infrastructure renewals, 242% is considerably more than what we have achieved over the last few years. So, so what extraordinary items are there in that? Because uh, is that because of a large amount of expenditure on roads, because of the money from the roads and maritime services in relation to the handover of the... Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. I'd have to actually take that on notice and come back to you. I don't have that level of... Yeah, because that's a lot higher than what we would yeah. have, tr have traditionally had. Yeah. So therefore, there must be some extraordinary items in there that have inflated that to such a high figure, because we've been well under 100 for several years. Yeah, it, it actually could be more related to not so much the numerator, but the denominator. So in, in relation to the actual yeah. depreciation and the estimates that have been put in there for that. So, But that's something we'll, we'll have a look at and come back to. And, and you mentioned that we're flat phased at the moment. Is there an intention to move to closer to projected phasings? 
Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, but that would probably be more something that will happen in the next financial year. Oh, yeah, realise that. Yeah. It'll take time to get there, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> it'll also tie into the, the implementation of the corporate um, business system as well. Uh, another question on page 100. Um, it says that the contract negotiated and reviewed by KSC legal advisors contract due to be signed by the 17th of August. Was that in fact signed on Friday? That's in relation to the um, corporate business system implementation? Uh, no, um, we're, we're hoping that that happens this week. So there's a couple of, we're sort of down to one or two uh, clauses in terms of getting agreement with the vendor in relation to those. Um, and so the expectation is that that will hopefully happen this week. Yeah, just seeing it indicated it would have happened last Friday, I thought I'd yeah. ask whether it had or not. Yeah. Councillor uh, Hawthorne. On um, 13 .9, which is uh, development approvals and construction certificates. Um, there's a couple of questions I have about some of the approvals and I'm wondering about some of them and I'm just trying to inform myself and my fellow councillors on what they mean. Um, on page 29, the first page of development of approvals and construction certificates, the third item down talks about an unmanned refuelling depot and I presume women can be unmanned too, but I don't understand the, that statement. But um, looking at the Google Maps of the location, it's next to the Puma service station. So it's n not the Puma service station. Who's going to be refuelling there and will there be a security fence? And I, I, I presume that there, there'll be mandatory um, requirements for such a depot. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, just by way of, I guess, some background in, in relation to that particular DA, I've just got a, a very brief description here which I'll just run through, um, which probably will, will answer your question, Councillor Hall. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, consent has been granted for an unmanned refuelling depot in an industrial state at um, South Kempsey. The proposed refuelling station is designed to provide for 24-hour operation of diesel supply to the transport industry. Um, the facility is fully unmanned with the payment of diesel fuel made by a swipe card technology. Um, so it, it, it doesn't need those security measures to, to operate. It's obviously by fully, it's not a, not a cash business obviously through, um, through card. So it's a totally separate uh, thing to the Puma petrol station or yep. service station, thank you. On page 31, um, in the Council report on development applications refused, withdrawn or rejected. Um, the first item there was refused by Council, uh, which was to demolish an existing building and construct commercial premises and dwelling. Um, what was the reason for the refusal, please? Um, for a mixed development of commercial and, um, and shop top housing. Um, it was refused as it didn't comply with the, um, with the DCP um, for, on a number of means, including property access, on-site parking, um, manoeuvring areas, and there's a number of other things that it also didn't comply with. Um, it also didn't comply with some of the provisions of the, the LEP uh, and also um, the, the state uh, environmental protection. Um, for coastal protection, um, so there was, there's obviously um, you know, a significant number of things where, it's, where it hasn't complied, so on that basis it was refused. Okay. On the same page, uh, Director Fish, there's one at the bottom there on uh, uh, rejected by Council. Continued use of an existing building as a boarding house. It's actually the uh, old railway hotel and it was being used as a boarding house. Um, They've been refused. I think a boarding house is uh, something special. Have they got parameters that they can meet to make it or resubmit their DA? Uh, yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. Yes, they can, they can resubmit. The reason for the refusal was that um, it was submitted without any plans or an heritage assessment and it had the incorrect owner's um, consent with the, uh, with the lodgement. So um, you'd expect if they obviously comply with all those things, it would would then be uh, obviously go through the assessment process, but um, based on what was submitted, it, uh, it was required to be refused. It's actually down as rejected. Is there a difference between rejected, or rejected. and refused? Yeah. No, yeah. sorry, rejected, same thing. Yeah, because no, just one of them is refused and two of them are rejected. I'm just wondering whether there's a connotation, as if, if there's a difference between it. Like rejected means you don't comply at the moment, you might, but refused means you'll never comply. 
Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I'm not, not aware that there is a difference, but I will check on that. And my final question on item 13.9, Madam Mayor, um, is to do with page 33, and it's to do with Maclay Valley House, and uh, it's a um, the construction certificate has been issued to, I guess, uh, Thompson Health to put in the 55 sole occupancy units plus community centre. Um, and last night, or early this morning, Councillor Baxter found that our building approvals have gone through the roof and uh, we're leading the state and in a number of establishments. So can, can you tell me, um, is there a value that has to be submitted? What sort of money we're talking about? Because this is one of the grand successes of Kempsey Council's moratorium and we need to, to possibly be able to give out the fact that one million, two million, whatever, what, what would the value be of these units uh, as a general rule there, uh, Dr Fish? Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, I have to take that on notice. I can certainly provide some advice on that. Um, just on, with regard to um, Councillor Baxter's message, I've actually asked for what the, the reasoning is behind that that high figure that you saw in the in the chart that was provided. Um, but I'm happy to, happy to obviously provide that once I've got the necessary information. Thank you. That sort of chart should be put out for the general public and for the Argus because it's quite an amazing um, positive news for the shower and we should continue to put it out there. Thank you. So our consensus motion now consists of the recommendation which is 13.3. Seven, thirteen point eight and thirteen point nine. We have a mover, we have a seconder. All in favour of the recommendation? Aye. It's been carried. Thank you, councillors. We're moving into um, the, the item thirteen, thirteen point one. Do, thank Second you, councillor. That. It's been moved by Councillor Morris, seconded by Councillor Saul. <coughs> Page seven, councillor. Do you wish to speak to the recommendation? Any debate? I put the recommendation. It's been carried. Thank you, councillors. 13.2. Second that. Um, hang on a minute. We're, we're just trying to get our, our technology here, councillor. We're on page Sorry, 13. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I've finally got to it, but it's um, yeah, the, our new system is causing me lots of problems still. We're on page 13. It's 13.2. It's a dwelling at, at Green Hill. It's been moved by Councillor Morris and seconded by Councillor Saul. Um, Could I? Are you, have you caught up? You found the page. Uh, I have a question, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, certainly. You can ask the question. Part of the infrastructure for the airport was a non directional beacon, which was no longer required, and it's now being commissioned and removed. Um, who's paying for that? And does it either wholly. Um, Kempsey Council's responsibility because it was a, uh, a CASA required uh, item. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, the um, the removal of that um, that beacon was through the the navigational rationalisation project, which was a my understanding was a um, around the country exercise uh, undertaken by Air Services Australia, and that that program comes about through the increased use of um, GPS satellite navigation and obviously you reduce reliance on, on beacons on the ground. Um, so that, that, um, that particular beacon has been removed and the, and the site restored. Um, I'm not, not aware of, in terms of uh, who incurred the cost, that can certainly be, be checked. Um, but the initiative, it was initiated through, certainly through Air Services Australia. Any debate? I put the recommendation. All in favour, it's carried. Um, someone could ask Councillor Williams to return. Thank you, Councillor. We're now on item 13.2, dwelling at Greenhill. It's on page 13. It's been moved by Councillor Morris. It's been with a, second. With a small change. It, it, we'll wait till we get a seconder and then we can see if it needs to be an amendment. Do we have a seconder? Well, no. If, no, I want to move it with a small change. Oh, okay. 
So what, Madam Mayor, we're up to now 13.2 13. 13. 13. on page 13. Three. Sorry, 13.3 13. on page 18. Yes, that's oh, we just did Greenhill. Sorry, right, yes. I, I need to catch up. Yes, right. We're on the, the development contributions. Page 18. It's the small change, Councillor. Um, I'm, I may need the general manager's assistance in wording it in the appropriate manner or somebody else, but what I would like to do is to add a point three and point three be to vary, it, to, to vary the developer contributions moratorium to include any other land that was so rezoned to be included until the moratorium concludes. So whether, if there is land that was residential that this change to our LAP changed it to B4, I believe that we should be saying they are still entitled and we should be changing the moratorium to include that without a need for it to come back to council if somebody else applies. Because the intention was that they would have yeah. had it when the uh, po policy was put in place. <laughs> so let's just take a pause and if you can reword that, that'd be good. We're just here from the director, Director Fish. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Could, could I just clarify for, from Councillor Morris whether that refers to basically any land in that area or only those where there is um, has been an application prior to the um, the moratorium date? Well, the moratorium is still running, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, there is a lesser percentage. So what I am saying yep. is that the the conditions that existed at the time of the moratorium being put in place should be carried forward for any parcel of land that was eligible at the time of adoption. And if they become ineligible because of a change to the LEP, that should be restored and they should still be eligible without coming back to council for a resolution to that effect. Uh, there may not be any that happen, but... Are we making policy on the run? Are we possibly... We were, we're restoring what they had. Um, it, could, it could be seen as that, although I think the intention is that the policy is already there in this motion. So in actual fact, and I'm, I'm only saying uh, my view, it might not be all councillors' view, that it isn't actually policy on the run because we've got the policy already here doing it this time. And this is just to, uh, to short, short circus. At, at coming back to yeah, council sorry. every time if it happens again. It may not happen again, but it may happen it again. May. And if it does, we should be prepared to honour what they had when the moratorium was put in place. So, so in that instance, it, I, I don't perceive it as policy on the run. Question, Madam Mayor. Just a moment. I, I'll just take from the director, because we need to make just sure the wording's right clue. before we to move include, on. To Yes, Director. Yeah, councillors, just one thing to note. Obviously, the, um, the actual moratorium um, applies to de developer contributions for residential subdivision and dwelling developments in the townships of Kempsey and Fredrington. So obviously, the moratorium would only comply, apply to yes. such subdivisions or um, developments in terms of being residential. But because I was moved to B4, there is still uh, B4, you can still put a residential dwelling on B4, so therefore um, there may be applications that meet the conditions of the criteria. So what I'm saying is if there are applications that meet the conditions of the criteria, and whilst the developer contribution moratorium is still in place, they should be availed of the, those conditions if they had it when that was put in place, which that wording does. Uh, we had a second, I think. Um, I just yes, clarify General that Manager. Three, it's to vary the developer contribution moratorium to include any other land that was el eligible at the time of the adoption, and this relates to the changes of the LEP amendment number 15 prepared from September 2017. Yep. Okay. okay. That's where we, that's where we varied it to B4 to be. Yep. Um, so, so there was a greater flexibility <coughs> in the use of the land yep. there. So what I'm saying, because we changed it so there was greater flexibility, we shouldn't take. Um, away from people that had that ability if they uh, they should still have that, the entitlement to them? Yeah, I think we probably just need to put in there it might be after eligible or something in brackets um, modified under the LEP amendment number 15. Yeah, we'll put that in, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. so we know what it's relating back yeah. to. Yep. Where, where, where we need to so you can whack that in there somewhere. So what that means, Councillor, is that any 
um, persons that want to avail themselves of the monitorium who already had, previous to us changing the um, LEP out at South Kensey, to, to take up that monitorium contribution initiative will still be able to without it always having to come back to council. There may, not, as councillor said, there may not be any, but at least then it short changes. It, it's so is, simpler. Yeah. Councillor Horville, we do have a, we do have a, we don't have a seconder. I'm happy to second that. Thank, thank you, Councillor McGinn. Councillor Horville. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got a question for the General Manager and possibly uh, Director Fish. Um, the moratorium um, on a development on Springfield Drive, which I'm sure they both would know about, um, they were told that the, the subdivision was completed after the moratorium for that area. Um, and I had sat down at the request of the developers with Director Scott last year, and he made the commitment that the fees would not have to be paid, but things developed and the reason he said that they wouldn't have to be paid is because the delays were due to council uh, problems with the process um, of what was required on the, uh, in the subdivision. Um, then uh, early this year they were told that if they wanted the subdivision to go ahead... Councillor... I'm asking I, the question... I, 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 I understand I'll, that, but yep. I just think maybe this might be a conversation that you need to have at a different time because this is related to the subdivision T6 1686. Yeah. So, yeah, my question, I'm getting into it, Madam Mayor. Okay, I'll um, let you go, but yeah, just make you. sure it is related to yes. this, uh, uh, this only. Yeah. Should th that subdivision be included in this motion and therefore add that subdivision so that there's a payment back to the fees they had to pay to get the land release for sale? Uh, uh, yep. Um, the answer is um, certainly we'd want to be putting that into this motion. I wouldn't recommend putting that in motion at all. Um, at this point, we need to get more details on that and um, yeah, follow that up through the appropriate process to make sure we've got a very clear understanding of exactly what's occurred and we can actually give councillors good information so they can make an informed decision on it. OK, thank you. So uh, if I bring that up next uh, time... Or would it be you can bring it up in questions later on. Yeah, but would it be appropriate for a council uh, officer to bring it to the next council meeting, or would I have to do a notice of motion? No. Can we'll, councillor, we'll look into it anyway. Okay. I understand okay. that that has been resolved. I mean, I asked the question and got an answer back from the officers here. So it might be an idea to just um, raise it in questions as an update. Yeah? And then everyone will be across it. Okay, any debate? All in favour? It's carried. Thank you, Kay. Whoops, 13.4. Um, I also think that at this point we, we will um, be nominating the delegates. Yeah, we're recommending um, that we. There's, in the charter, there's two councillors. We'd actually be suggesting that you actually nominate those today. True. Yep, true. That's a good idea. Yep. And that's a two-year gig. Yep. 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 Thank you, councillor. Um, councillor... Uh, I'll take councillor Morris, and then I'll take councillor Williams. A couple of questions in relation to the charter. We've got there that two selected councillors is determined by council. <coughs> in a lot of instances where we have a, a committee like this or a group like this, um, and given that a council has to be there for a quorum, we quite often have an alternative. And I'd like to ask that we have that we consider appointing two councillors and an alternative councillor. Under members of the committee shall hold office. The last dot point on that one is got in the case of the industry for a two-year period commencing each council election. Um, we need to say, because each council, council election is every four years, so on a two-year cycle commencing following each council election, or on a, because we actually, can, or we could say on a two-year cycle when councillors elect their committee representatives. 
Um, but that, that needs to be completed because otherwise you're going to select somebody for two years and in the next last two years there's going to be nobody. Um, yeah, we'll add the word cycle in there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and just on bottom of three on membership, we've got a list of organisations there. Um, I was just wondering whether it would be worthwhile, considering it's the Economic Development and Tourism Committee Charter, that we should have some somebody clearly nominated as from the tourism industry. Because we know everything's business chamber, chamber of commerce, business chamber, business women's network, local education and schools provider, local industry associations representatives. No specific mention of industry op of tourism operators. Thank you, Director. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, that's fine. Th those um, um, groups, if you like, were only identified as examples, um, and we'll be encouraging, you know, um, submissions from you know broader groups than those. Um, happy to you know make an addition to add it in, add an additional dot point. Because, because, because by not having it there, someone in the tourism industry may be discouraged from applying. Whereas if you've got it there, you are in, more likely to actively encourage them to apply. Yeah, we can yeah, add a, another dot point just talking about the tourism industry. I suppose, given the fact that it does say tourism committee, because yeah. then it could have been argued that we need someone from the timber industry, we need someone yeah. from the farming industry, yeah. etc. <laughs> which is why I think. Um, it's fairly broad. Um, and, and, and Madam Mayor, we also need someone from the uh, historical groups too that would be on it, in my opinion, because we've got people coming and they need to visit tourist places that have historical things to do with, you know, there's a whole lot of areas that have got history that could be uh, promoted by this committee. No, I think we need to understand too. I think we need to understand that this is at high level. It's not at the operation level. It's getting the strategy together. Councillor McGinn. Um, Madam Mayor, I'd just like to express a little bit of concern about having two councils, council laws and an alternative identified. Um, that wouldn't be considered best practice in terms of corporate governance with committee structures. Um, the reason being that the alternative hasn't, or, or presumably, um, wouldn't have attended all the other meetings. Decisions are then made often, and this person hasn't been um, the alternative person that comes in for a meeting just to make up the numbers, uh, is generally not across all of the issues at the detail that committees work at. So in my experience, um, being involved in boards, having uh, an alternative is not considered best practice governance. Mainly on the basis that you're asking somebody to provide a vote to make a quorum, yet they haven't been involved in all the background information, which committees really, that's their job, to delve deeper into issues. So also they wouldn't have built the trust and um, comradeship with the people on the committee over the preceding meetings. Therefore, they aren't uh, generally as effective. And to just come in to be able to put up a hand and vote is not considered best decision making. Um, but, Madam Mayor, at the same time, I would like to believe that if somebody was an alternative, they would keep across the minutes, they would be abreast of it, and they would attend some meetings. They wouldn't have a voting right at those meetings, but there's no reason why they can't attend some meetings That's if they so desire. That's unnecessary, then, you're having three councillors on a committee, and you've decided that it's two. Madam Mayor, could I just make a comment? I disagree with Councillor McGinn in that um, I'm on the Melville Hall Committee, and we have an alternate, and I send the minutes to the alternate all the time. And when one of us can't attend, the alternate turns up and it across the issues. Uh, and the issues that come up on that agenda for that meeting can be dealt with by the alternate as well as the person attending. It's a committee, not a board. Is this in the... Um, this is not part of the recommendation that we're talking about because yeah. we're not in a workshop either, councillors. I might... The it's in the charter. I ask that in the charter we consider adding an alternative. It's only consider at this point. Yeah. Which, which can be held over until next, yes. until next meeting when we are appointing. And in but, the meantime, um, maybe our, um, our director can do some research into what um, is considered best practice and what is, but what do, is the norm. Okay. But I do point out that a lot of our committees we where we have got two councillors or even one councillor, we do have an alternative. Uh, yes, and that's just been, I think, a tradition. I know that 
and this is just from experience, I did go to, I was the alternative to the mid-north coast at one stage and I went there and had ab absolutely no clue what was going on. I hadn't been provided with any previous minutes or, or anything and, you know, it really wasn't. So I, I get both sides. Okay, I'm going to put the recommendation. All in favour of the recommendation? The recommendation's been carried. Thank you, councillors. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we finished. I couldn't see any lights. Or right at the start, that at least we change it to be the tourism person down the bottom. And yes, that so was taken. Yeah, but that was taken. But there's no mention in in the motion with the. It should be with the changes as agreed. Oh, okay. Under number two, we'll, we'll take the vote again. Yep. The, tra the, the changes were that we add a, a tourism representative there and we put in the two yearly cycle. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, is there any further debate now? I put the recommendation. All in favour? It's carried. Um, 13.5, matters pr in progress. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a second? Thank you, Councillor Williams. Do you have any... No? Yeah, Question, Councillor... Oh, actually, I will take Councillor Baxter this time, then Councillor Horville. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. On page uh, 12 uh, of the attachments, uh, um, Director Fish, uh, the um, development at... Old Station Road. Uh, that's that's going to go ahead as uh, 41 hectare blocks. Is it? Is it? Is it my right to interpret that? Um, page, what page are you page on? Page 12 of the attachment. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. The it's the, the minimum lot size will will go will not be 40 he under the preparing proposal. It's reducing the minimum lot size from 40 hectares to one hectare. Right. All right. Do we know how many lots there'll be? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I'd, I'd need to look at oh, okay. what was potentially planned in that regard. Um, it would, when you actually considered that item in June, um, there may have been some information in the report in that oh, regard. Okay. Um, but uh, I can certainly advise you offline in, in regards to that. I, I just think it's wonderful that there's more residential blocks coming on the market. It's wonderful. Thank you. Councillor Horville. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I've got a number of um, items I want to, to, to look at and uh, withdraw some of the recommendations to withdraw them. Um, item 282 on page 9. Could we correct that, Director? Will be auctioned on the 23rd of August. Uh, yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, they can be yeah, change the tense of, of where that's at, um, based on the uh, auction being the, the 23rd of August. Okay. Uh, on page 10, the next page, bottom. Um, a bit confused about what was written there. The comments on the last item, 287. It says not yet paid. Uh, awaiting landowner to sign acquisition deed completed, recommend re removal. So, has it been paid? Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor, I'll give you... I picked that one up before the meeting. I'm not quite sure how that uh, ended up like it did. Um, just in terms of an update of, uh, of where that one's up to. Um, so, in ter the, um, the compensation is not yet being paid to the landowner, uh, as the, the landowner hasn't signed the acquisition deed as yet. Um, the documents uh, have been uh, signed by the, the general manager, however. Um, and thirdly, as the acquisition is not yet complete, council doesn't own the land, so it can't be dedicated as, as a road. So um, that uh, item would not be recommended for removal. It would uh, so it's be, going to be reported maintained. When, yeah, yeah, be maintained. Yes, correct. Thank you very much. Uh, on page twenty, I'm getting there myself. Um, item 273, um, it reads that a report be
be furnished to Council on use of CCTV facilities or other processes at airports in Australia to monitor aircraft movements instead of have data processing. The report should say whether a change to Kempsey Shire Council's monitoring should be considered. Um, at the present time, we have not received a report, but it's recommended it be removed. So I would like that uh, recommendation to be taken out. We still haven't received a report, and um, so I, think, I don't think that the progress um, report is a report to council. It's a report on what's going on with the information, but it actually doesn't come back with uh, costings and uh, a recommendation to council, which I would suggest is what a report to council would have, a recommendation from staff, and we would then vote on it. So I would like to suggest that that uh, recommend removal be deleted, please. Um, through you, um, Madam Mayor, uh, council staff do see this report as a report to council, and we've provided the information. The um, resolution of council was to provide something that talks about the um, potential use of CCTV to monitor the movements. The information is actually contained in the body of this report, showing actually what we've actually done and undertaken. Um, if council is of the mind to ask for a report, we can provide a report at the next meeting, which will contain this exact same information. Councillors, you are aware that you decide as a group whether these stay in or they stay out. These are, Councillor Horwell is suggesting these as an amendment. Yes, and uh, I, I would just... Yeah, but, but I'm saying we can't actually move a motion or change to the information there because it's a report to us in matters in progress. So I'm arguing the point that until it comes back as a report to councillors, we can't actually vote in favour or against the report. So what should we do is to move an amendment to it being noted that item 2.73 not be removed? Yes. I mean, council either votes in favour or votes Correct. That's right. <laughs> I'm just telling councillors that there, there is a process here and Whilst Councillor Horville is outlining these, you, you as a council decide whether you're going to accept. That's correct. Yes. Councillor Horville? So I, I would uh, move that amendment that it not be removed. Uh, do we do them one by one? Because I have a couple of others too, Madam Mayor. Uh, keep going. No, okay. all at once. Okay. Um, item... We're up to page 22. Item 283. Am I looking at the right page? <coughs> Sale yard strategic options. Um, I've already written to the general manager about this. That, um, the, uh, the amendment we all agreed on had uh, five steps, and here we only have two. So could I suggest that be changed? Uh, it's got the, the workshop involving councils, council staff, um, uh, and the second one, the further analysis be undertaken. Whereas we voted that council notes the strategic options, number one, two, a workshop involving councils, council management, key external stakeholders, number three, further analysis be undertaken, followed by the workshop, and an option papers be prepared, four, the option papers be put on public exhibition for 28 days with a request for submissions, and five, a report on the submissions and option papers be presented to a future council meeting. That was what we voted in favour of, it was unanimous, and. Uh, if that's matters in progress, I think that should be in there. Yeah, Thank through you. you, Madam Mayor. I'm not quite sure how uh, four and five um, have been deleted so they can be added back in. Right. So it's not being removed, it's just that that's yeah, an no, no, error no. in yeah. Enter, yeah. entering. Thank you. <sighs> Item 306 on page 24. Um, resignation from Midrock and we recommend removal, but I'm just going to ask a question. Um, if we've resigned and the board doesn't meet anymore, is there an executive officer distributing the money and how's that going to happen? 
Yeah, through Madam Mayor, yeah, the board of Mid Rock at the last meeting this council and Port Macquarie Hastings Council was represented at moved a motion to distribute the funds, um, to re redisperse those funds back to the two councils who are resigning um, in proportion to what they're actually owed. So that, that is actually on their books and their executive officer will actually ensure that's undertaken. The rest of the money went to the joint organisation, the new one? No, the money, um, Midrock still exists, so it still has three councils, it's just two councils, of, or four councils, two councils have resigned from it, and I understand there's a report going to Bellingen Council this month for them to resign from it as well. So Midrock still exists as an entity, um, so it still holds accounts um, and has an executive officer, etc., and they will do whatever they want in terms of meetings. The Mid-North Coast Joint Organisation also exists, made up of, of Port Macquarie, Kempsey and, and Bellingen. We have resigned from Midrock. The funds from Midrock will come back to the, count, the two councils and for council to then consider um, putting that into the JO. So, yeah, so at the moment there's two bodies still operating. Madam Mayor, the item 307, it's on uh, page 17. I don't know how I've missed, got this out of order. I apologise for that. It's, um, the numbering is different. Oh, of course, the different directors, I'm sorry, yes. So, um, a letter of request, the motion was that a letter of request be sent to Roads and Maritime Services through the local member. Um, I think it's been an error and the general manager wrote directly to the RMS and not to the local member in the first instance. I'm sorry, what page is 307 on? Page 17. I'll, I'll check the letters. The effect is um, the same in that the RMS has um, been written to. That's the, the, actually the same effect. Um, in addition to that, we've actually met with the... Um, Yeah, the regional director to actually raise this. Um, it was in a meeting on our agenda with him about two weeks ago as well, so we've actually raised it directly with RMS as well. Yes, but the, the actual motion said send directly through our local member, and we have a bonus local member in that she's the Minister for Roads, and I thought if anyone could support this from the high up coming down to the local um, RMS at Grafton would be the Minister. So that's why I moved that, and that's why Council voted that way, that we write directly to the Minister to ask for her support. We've carbon copied the letter to the local Minister or local member who's the Minister, but did we ask in that carbon copy that she support this in some way, Mr General Manager? The resolution was to, to write to RMS through the local member. I I take a, a te very minor technical point that we've CC'd her in. It doesn't actually ask for us to ask her to support it. Obviously, our local member is very supportive of what we do. Um, and as I said, we've also taken it up with RMS. So I don't think there's too many other ways we can actually get to relevant RMS people on this matter. Thank you, General Manager. Councillor Morris. <laughs> um, I've just got a couple of questions or a couple of queries. Um, interim procedure public domain contributions plan. It's recommended for removal. But Do you have the um, page number? Uh, page the one. first one, page one, right under the first item on page one. <coughs> We've got it recommended for removal, um, and I suppose it depends on how you read or how you remember or interpret what the resolution was for. Uh, I, I interpreted it that we get a six monthly report. Six monthly, not we get a six monthly report, one of. So I'm asking that that matter not be removed because I believe there should be continuing six monthly reports until Council decides that it doesn't want any more. We've only had one since the implementation, and the six monthly reports were for us to gauge the um, improvement of that and whether this transitional arrangement is worth maintaining. So I admit, yes, we've had one six-monthly report, but we still need a second one and potentially a third one. 
Certainly, um, our, our reading of that is that we are going to be providing ongoing six-monthly reports. Okay. Um, so that's our understanding. That's what we've put in place. So hence, um, we're now recommending to remove that because we've already put that procedure in place. Otherwise, okay, you no keep problem. this year basically forever. I just wanted to check to make sure that yes. it was going to be going forward yes. in, that, in that manner. Yeah. Because it doesn't say that, that, there'll be, that there's a process in place, where in other ones there is that comment made. Um, I've just got a question mark on that. Oh, yeah, the lower, on 222 on page 3, um, who is, uh, we resolved, there are no councillors on that um, risk management, risk management technical group? That's correct, it was a, a technical operational group. Okay. On 226 on page 4, <coughs> um, we've got the comment that um, develop, development of a long-term energy strategy, that action not currently incorporated in the 2018-19 operating plan. Um, I just asked the question on what basis are the actions that are currently being undertaken um, by staff in regard, regard to replacement of lights and street lights and so forth, which I would think would be, and I'm in favour of those happening, um, but we've we're going ahead and implementing actions that are likely to come out of the energy strategy, but we haven't we haven't undertaken the energy strategy. Um, it just seems a uh, cart in front of the horse type thing that we're implementing what a strategy would be telling us to do, but we haven't done the strategy yet. Yeah, through Madam Mayor, there's um, operational aspects of things like renewing street lights and things like that, which. Um, as we're doing those programs, it just makes sense to do them in a sustainable way. Part of the council's mandate is to make sure that we're actually responsible with our um, resources. So even without a strategy, that's just a responsible action of the staff. Now, the only reason I ask that, uh, Mr General Manager, is previously I've asked for those actions to be undertaken, and we've been told, no, we can't because we haven't got the money yeah. to upgrade to the LED streetlights, yeah. which is, in my opinion, the best way that we should be going. But I was just curious as to why we can now do it before the strategy is done, but we couldn't do it previously. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillor Morris, we're actually currently looking at the um, uh, street light replacement project at the moment, yeah. um, getting information from Essential Energy. So the intention is that we'll have a report for the September Council meeting with recommendations around that. Okay. Um, I've got a couple of others I just have to go through. <coughs> one. Madam Mayor, I have one more I'd like to um, change, please. And just while we're waiting. Move. Councillor, I've found, found I'm going to continue with yeah, Councillor Morris. Uh, item 267 um, on page 20, um, I would ask that that be removed because we actually uh, resolved the resolution today of webcasting supersedes that. So um, rather than waiting for three months' time to remove it, can that please be removed if everybody agrees with that? Yes, <coughs> sensible. Um, item 276 on page 21, um, I don't believe that that will not occur, so rather than drag that, that particular matter up continually, I would ask that that be removed as well. What number was that? 276. Page 21. There, we don't need to continually drag that matter up. It should be removed. It'll, it'll happen. Uh, that's the only ones I've got. Uh, I don't mean. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Horwell. Madam Mayor, I'd like to just, uh, following up to what um, happened with the other amendment, uh, not to be removed, 273, um, I would like 168 not to be removed for the same reason. Um, the resolution on the garage sale trail on page 18, the, the resolution reads that Kempsey Shire Council receives a report concerning the participation in the garage sale trail uh, from 2018 on independently, uh, independent council run garage sale weekend. Um, there's a, a short report there, but it doesn't go into all the details of what was put to Council last year. And so I think until that information is brought forward in an actual report that we can have a recommendation to either uh, follow through on or vote against. Um, I'd suggest that that not be removed, please. Item 168. My response, Madam Mayor, would be the same as, as previously. Council staff have provided that. We can again use council resources to do another report which will provide that same information. Yeah. Councillor Baxter. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to uh, also say that it says there in the 
in the column there, Councillor Horville, that um, it is deemed not financially feasible. It's estimated the council would have to budget fifteen thousand dollars to ensure it was successful. So, well, what, what's I'd not clear that about that? In that last year, I asked. The question Just a point of order. That. What we're doing now is, um, we, rather than debate that. What we need to be doing is deciding what we're going to keep in and what we're going to keep out. All right. Well, I'm saying it's, it, uh, it, it should be removed. It's well, in that case, councillors, now you've all got in front of you what we're, what we're here to do. We have a report that has got amendments to it. As a group, you can either choose to take the recommendations from put forward by Councillor Horville um, and there was two there at the bottom that were put forward. Do we need Councillor Morris? Do we need to be in workshop? It would be Madam much Mayor. better if yes, you were. Yes, it would be easier. I'll move that we go into workshop. Second, Thank you. All in favour of going into workshop? Thank you, councillors. We're now in workshop and um, you'll be able to have more opportunity to get your head around what has just been placed in front of us. We do have a mover and a seconder of the original motion that the information be noted. Did we? Which was McGinn and Williams. Oh, there you go. So, so just so you can, so the councillors get their head around this. The councillors that moved and seconded may choose to accept some of these, all of them, or there may be a, the need for an amendment that needs to be voted on. So you've got to keep up and decide what you want to do with these recommendations. Yes, Councillor McGinn. Um, Madam Mayor, I've listened to the um, <coughs> discussion that's been contributed here by Councillors <coughs> Morris and Hallville, and um, I would like to just state the position that I agree with the, the recommendations here, the amendments for 282, 287, 283, 267 and 276 for the um, reasons that the two other councillors have given. But with regards to 168 and 273, we've heard from the general manager that council has already provided reports on these matters and that no further information would be given, so I, I can't... Um, Agree to those two items. Could I respond so, to so, so, what you just a moment, councillor. So, what you would be doing, agreeing to amend the motion that you have put in, if it is agreed to by your seconder. Yes. To take all those amendments apart from the two one six eight and two seven three. Correct. On the basis that the reports have been given by council. And if they they. We're in workshop, just so we've all got our head around this. If, was, is that all that you can think of, Councillor Morris? I just want you to do it. Was there any others? Were there, is there anyone lost? I, I haven't written them down, but I believe that's all that was there. And uh, 267 two, two, six, and 276 were the only ones that were separate to what that I recommended be removed because I don't believe that they're required. One's a result yeah. of an OM today and one's yeah. don't need to drag it up all the time. Um, the others I think I had satisfactory answers to. Okay. All right. The, if... And, and be, there is always the option that 168 and 273 can come as an amendment. Um, we're in workshop. Do, councillors, uh, okay, we're back in um, open council. Councillor McGinn, and whether well, that was in workshop, now I have to speak in open council, that's fine. I'm sorry, I missed your light. But you can speak in open council. Thank you. If it's before, if it's, will it change what the, the, um, the outcome of the workshop or do you want to go back into workshop? No, I'll be foreshadowing, I'll, I'll be moving an amendment that all the things be put in okay. as a new amendment. Um, Madam Mayor, I just wanted to say that um, items 168 and 273 are setting a precedent. We, as councillors, ask for a report from council staff and 
what has occurred in the past is a report comes back with a recommendation and we as the responsible supervising body debate the information, ask questions about the information and then we either accept the recommendation from staff or we change it. Under this process, the report goes into matters in progress and we don't have any further say. We can't ask questions, we can't move amendments. What has been put up is the final thing. So we shouldn't go with the precedent of changing what in past practice of council is that we have a report and we as the responsible body deal with. On the matters uh, Councillor Baxter raised, um, the, the cost of 15000 approximately. Last year we went through this process and uh, it was very annoying to me to ask a question and be told it's 15000 by a director and then when I ask the same question again with new information presented, oh no, that 15000 was for Midrock and it's only $3,500. Now, the general manager and the directors don't know that history, but that's what happened. The numbers I'm changed. The now, I'm asking that we do not go with the precedent, Councillor McGinn, that we accept the report in matters in progress as being the report that is requested by us, the councillors. Okay, so we now ha you're moving an amendment, which is move, this? Yes. Okay, we're now going to um, have the uh, the vote as to the mount the motion being put. Do councillors want the motion to be put? Could I speak against that, Madam Mayor? No, it's a procedural motion. Madam Mayor, I need to incorporate those first changes into the original motion as a second or first. Yes. So I'm just going to take the, the vote on whether the motion be put. All against the motion being put. Um, uh, Madam, uh, Madam Mayor, I would question whether we can put the motion because there hasn't been two speakers for and against. Oh, actually, you're absolutely we're, right. There was a reason why I wasn't going to take it. Yeah, we're thank you. The whole time. We, can't, we can't take that procedural motion. Sorry, <laughs> Councillor. Um, okay. Um, Anyway, let's, we will. We're getting there. We're almost there because, Councillor Williams, are you agreeable to accept those into your into the motion? I'm accepting the changes to 267, 276, 282, 283, as per Councillor McGinn's. So that is now the motion. There is a, a amendment that has been put by Councillor Horville. That is to all those ones to also include item 168 and 273. That's your amendment, Councillor? Yes. Uh, and Do I have a second up for that amendment? Second that. Councillor Saul has seconded that amendment. Do you wish to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor. But first, could I ask a, a question of the General Manager? If we move a motion as a council and we want a report back that will give us the chance to debate and consider a recommendation from council and ask questions and get detailed information on an issue, how are we going to put that into the motion from now on so that it will come out as a report to council in section 13 that we can debate? Because at the moment, this is, these two reports have been just shifted into matters in progress. Now, so I asked the general manager, what words do we need to have to make that happen? Because at the moment, the system has been bypassed by having these put into matters in progress and recommending removal. It's three, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't believe the system has been bypassed. Um, the, the, if you look at 168 as an example, council staff investigate the participation in the council and recommend that council does not participate. Council has been debating that, discussing that, and you could do that and continue to do that right now, and you would simply move an amendment where you disagree or agree with where we've finalised recommend removal. So the information is actually contained in there and you can actually debate that as much as any individual and collective councillors wish to do. Madam Mayor, can I now speak to my motion, please? Uh, yes, you can. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The two items that I would like to keep in, and that's why I've removed the amendment, items 168 and 273, as you all are aware, 
are reports to council that are not in the body of reports to council, which is in section 13, staff reports to council. As I just found out from the general manager, there are no words that he can envisage that we need to put in a uh, motion that would require council to actually have a report in reports to council in section 13. Um, do we have to say section 13 or how do we get this done? So at the moment, until we have these come back to us as right, full, thought out reports with a recommendation that is there in the um, uh, matters in progress, we don't have the right to, to supervise and direct council staff anymore. It's being taken away from us. And I don't think it's deliberate by the staff, but if we go down this way of removing uh, and not accepting those as reports in matters in progress, we're losing our power as council. And so I'm suggesting we don't uh, accept their removal, but we keep them in. And that's why I would like you to really consider. And if it comes back exactly as the general manager has written or the staff have written, then we will have a recommend to, recommendation to us. And I almost certainly will suggest it will come down to accepting them the recommendation, but we don't have an individual um, vote on whether we accept the recommendation. They are just coming through as matters in progress. And I hope you can understand it's not about the actual issues involved there, whether it be the CCTV at the airport or the garage sale trial. It's, that's not the issue. The issue is the process, and we need the process to operate so that we as councillors can continue to supervise fully. We ask for a report. I suggest when we ask for a report in a motion that we get a report that can be debated and considered and this hasn't occurred in this case. So I'm asking you to support the amendment that they, those two items be brought back to the next meeting. And we'll vote Count Councillor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've just about finished. Um, if they come back to the next meeting and we vote to go with a recommendation from staff that's already there in the matters in progress, fine, that's how it will be. But I'm just asking you to consider that we keep the process that has been common practice for this council all the time that I've been on council. It, I don't know where this precedent has come from, whether it's new that a report goes into matters in progress, but matters in progress are is a pretty unique matter or part of our council meetings. Uh, we can't have it become a de facto reporting to council. I'll take Councillor Williams, then Councillor um, Shields, then Councillor no, Councillor Baxter. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will speak against the amendment. Um, I believe that the general manager and staff have done exactly what we've asked them to do, and we can ensure that it does come back to our council meetings by putting that in the resolution. You've in these both of these resolutions have been asked for a report. Um, what is a report? It's information on that. I believe that it's there. Um, but every other time that we want something to come back to council or it's brought back to us, we put it in the recommendation. There's others there that says, you know, a delegate's report to be submitted no later than the August council meeting. That's what we need to put it in. You know, if we want it to come back to a council meeting, we need to put it in the resolution. And we have previously. And I remember we were sat there arguing for many, many times about the time frame and what meeting it's coming back to. Um, it's pretty simple. I just think we're wasting our time. We're going around and around in circles. Let's move on. Count Councillor Baxter. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I just turned my light on because there are other... Oh, like, sorry, was it was Councillor Shields, then Councillor Baxter, then Councillor... Um, uh, Morris, I'll get it. Yeah, Councillor Shields. I'm speaking against the amendment as well, so shouldn't there technically be someone for the amendment after... Is there anyone else who wants to speak for the amendment? I, I want to speak on a completely different matter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, might get a, you might get a point of order. <laughs> I might not get a point of order either, and that is that um, it was agreed during the discussion, which has been left out of the list, that item 287 on page 10 not be recommended for removal. So we need to add item 287 
not to be removed. What's that about? Sorry, Bruce. That was the one about the acquisition of land where the payment hasn't been made, where Director Fish agreed that it shouldn't oh, yes, be removed. I had that. Mm -hmm. I had <laughs> That's that not on, on the list. list. It's not on the list up there. I agree with that. Th thank you. We'll take that. Um, we'll take that one. Uh, Can I Shield. put the amendment, saying that there are no other people Speakers. speaking for? Yes, you can. Yeah. All in favour of putting the amendment? Okay. Putting it, the amendment be put. Okay, which means okay. And I now take my right to speak, please. No, surely not again. It's Councillor McGinn. It's an amendment. Right, thank you. I stand corrected. Okay. I now put the amendment. All in favour of the amendment? All against the amendment? The amendment has lost. <laughs> Woo! The amendment has been lost. The motion is as it stands. You can have the right of reply. Madam Mayor and fellow councillors, this is supposed to be a report that just keeps us informed of what's going on uh, on basis of the decisions and direction, strategic decision making that councillors have had in past meetings. We're getting bogged down in this. We're going round and round. We're treading water. We're not creating any additional value. And it seems to me that what we're doing is um, if we don't like the answer that's given, we want to amend a motion so that we um, keep it on the books, keep the issue alive. I don't think that's the purpose of Matters in Progress. This is just simply an update to us. And uh, I'm afraid I don't think we've used our time in the last half hour or however long it's taken as wisely as we otherwise should have. We should be working on the big issues, making strategic decisions and not revisiting the same issues over and over again. And I'd like to put the motion. Okay, councillors, I put the motion as it stands. All in favour of the motion, all against the motion. The motion's been carried. Thank you, councillors. We now move on to item 13.6. No, that was... Uh, Madam Mayor, I'm, I'll, I'll move that... With, oh, it was withdrawn, sorry. I, I will move that with a minor amendment. And yes, Councillor. And we remove the fourth last word from the recommendation. Being significant? Yeah, being significant. How do you define what is a significant objection? So, therefore, that there be no, that no objections are received. My, my problem is no, a significant objection to somebody might be an insignificant objection Correct. to somebody else. Yep, yep, it's yep, yep. Word, yep. Not a, not. It's been seconded by Councillor Williams. Do you wish to speak, Councillor? Uh, no, I, I fully agree with it, but I don't believe that we should have that word there. We should be coming back if there are any objections. That, that's, that's, that's fine. I'm, yes, I've just asked for a point of order from the crowd, to, from the councillors, if you could please be, remain silent while the debate's going on. It's distracting the councillors from their decision making. So please, order in the gallery. Thank you. Um, so any debate? No debate. Put the motion. It's been carried. Thank you, councillors. Seven, eight, and nine um, have been done. Sixteen point one. Um, yep. I'll move it. Do I have a seconder? Thanks, Councillor. Um, there is no. Um, I don't need to speak because it's all in here. The only thing that I do want to, to say in relation to that conference is. One of the big things that um, was talked about was the constitutional recognition of local government, and it would appear that that's being talked about at local government New South Wales um, in forums and at country mayors. So it may... Whoa! <laughs> you've, given me, you've given me five minutes. I've only just started. Um, New time limits. So, so that was one of the big themes that did come through uh, the conference. The word collaboration also was mentioned in every single um, session. I think it would be very um, beneficial if councillors get the time to look at the 
the, the presentations. And we also were privileged to hear Bernard Salt speak. And I believe he might be coming to the coast sometime this year, so watch that space. I put the recommendation. That's been carried. Thank you, councillors. Uh, questions? Um, Councillor Baxter. Councillor Saul. Councillor Shields. Sorry. Community members are concerned about the amount of graffiti occurring at the South West Rock Skate Park. What can be done to reduce this graffiti? It was suggested to publicise graffiti tags so that the offenders can be identified. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Morris. Microphone, Councillor. Given the general, and I've forwarded them through to Donna, so she's got them electronically. Given the general manager's answer to question for next meeting at the April 2018 meeting in relation to airport aircraft fuel at the Kempsey Airport, being bracket the general manager advised that fuel does not have a shelf life; it will not become unstable, unusable over time, and appropriate dewatering is taking place. What caused the avgas to expire is reported to a question for next meeting from the July 2018 council meeting question mark. Was the advice given to Council at the April 2018 meeting incorrect? Question two. In relation to the expired avgas at the Kempsey Airport fuel installation, what quantity of fuel has expired? What was the purchase price of that fuel? What is the anticipated cost to dispose of this fuel? Question three. It is apparent that additional works are being undertaken to make the fuel installation at Kempsey Airport compliant. Why were these works not included in the original scope of works? What is the scope or extent of works required to make the fuel installation compliant? What is the projected cost of these works? Is there a budget for these works within the operating plan? And are these works within budget allocation? And four, what is the anticip anticipated date for the art installation at the Fredericton roundabout, or interchange, we should say? When will details of these works be advised to the community? Thank you, Councillor. Councillor McGinn. No, no questions. Councillor Horville. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have three questions. Uh, first question, will Council ascertain whether there is an Australian standard requirement for road line, lo, road line marking paint which is required for semi-autonomous semi vehicles using lane keeping technology? If there is a standard, does the KSC contractor for road line marking use such paint? We're looking at the future with that question. Second question, was the GHD report, Kempsey Shire Council, Kempsey Cinema Cost Benefit Analysis, November 2017, page 5, section 1.6.1, correct in stating that a local builder had been given the contract for construction of the cinema at the time of the publication of this document? And my third question relates to the airport as well, another cost. What are the estimated costing of decommissioning and rehabilitating the site of the old fueling system at Kempsey Airport. What would be the approximate time frames for these two actions and what source of funding is envisaged? Councillor Williams. No Thank you, councillors. Um, we're now going to move into confidential. So. Thank you, Councillor Saul. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Williams. We need to um, clear the gallery, thank you. And stop the recording, correct. <laughs>